Elizabeth McDonald, web reporter for GC42. Commissioners have made their decision. The 42nd General Council now recognizes one order of ministry. With me is Bruce Gregerson, one of the lead staff working with the committee that developed this proposal. Bruce, in a word, just briefly, what does one order, what's it going to mean for ministers in the United Church of Canada? So, in fact, we've always had one order of ministry. We have recognized the ordained and the commissioned as part of one order of ministry, two expressions, two streams, and then over the years has grown up designated lay ministry. And increasingly, uh, a large number of people are moving into ministry through the DLM or the designated lay ministry program. And what this tries to do is to uh, begin to move into the one order, designated lay ministry, by a variation on our educational programs, but recognizing that for designated lay ministers who, uh, who declare themselves to be in a lifetime commitment to ministry in the church, who are placed in situations where they're functioning with sacraments, we believe that they're already part of this one order of ministry, but we haven't found a theological way of, of constructing that. And then for di diaconal ministers, uh, again, part of the two streams of the one order, but who historically have not been authorized for sacraments because their focus has been on education, pastoral care, and, and, and social service. We don't believe, the Theology and Faith Committee, that there's any rationale for not authorizing for sacramental ministry. And when you put those two things together, you effectively have one order of ministry, which is what this document is proposing. Commissioners have made a decision, but they don't see it as the final decision. They've also authorized a Category 3 remit. Can you tell us a bit about what will be involved yeah. in the process? Where do we go from here? So the here? General Council can't enact this on its own. It's part of the change of, it's part of the ministry of the church. Fundamental changes in the identity of the church and the ministry of the church have to go to remit. And there are two kinds of remits. One is just a presbyteries, but the proposal is that this go to a Category 3 remit, which is our highest test of, of agreement across the church. So what will happen is a two-year study uh, of this proposal. Every pastoral charge and every presbytery will be invited to vote on it. And to pass, it has to have a majority of pastoral charges and a major majority of presbyteries who are eligible to vote. So if you don't vote on this, it's a no vote. We know that from the remit on doctrine just a few years ago. It's a very high bar. The church will have to come to have a common mind in this if it's gonna go forward. Now one of the concerns that was expressed during the debate was will there be an opportunity, will there be consultation with the three ministry groups, with designated lay ministers, with diaconal ministers, with ordained ministers? Where do, does input from ministers fit into the so, remit process. So there will be a there will be processes as part of this. There will be a study document that will be developed and there will be workshops that will be held uh, and any other mechanisms that will help people to understand the intention. And I do believe uh, that, that that will include specialized meetings. I would find it hard to believe that we that as this moves forward, there wouldn't be opportunities for specialized consultation of, among those who are most intensely involved in this. And that's of course the ordered ministry, the designated ministry of the church. Another concern that was expressed, a question that was asked, will this have implications for our ecumenical relationships? And we've already been testing that, um, but we will continue to do that. The Theology and Interchurch and Faith Committee, I believe, will uh, invite further responses. But the initial responses we've had from the Anglican United Church Dialogue Group, for example, has been supportive of this, that it moves us towards an understanding of ministry, they believe, that makes uh, it more connected to the uh, understanding of ministry of the Anglican Church. So we've been uh, uh, testing this out. We've had some conversations with it, with the United Church of Christ, and now that we have a, a full communion arrangement, that will continue as well. One of the things that was striking as this proposal was introduced was the history that was provided and the realization that the United Church of Canada has been wrestling with ministry and who's involved and what do we understand with ministry for decades and decades. Yeah, so the 1940s began studies. That I don't think is unusual. I mean we're a reformed church and by very definition it means once reformed always reforming. So it's not surprising that we have been continuing to remake our understanding of ministry. When we began to work on the Statement on Ministries of, 19, of 2009 and 2012, we actually named them by the year because we believe that we will continue to evolve in our understanding of ministry. That's not surprising if we're a live church 
it's because we in fact grow in awareness and responsiveness to God's leading. Bruce, thank you very much. Bruce okay. Gregerson, if you'd like to find out more about the General Council decision to recognize one order of ministry, go to gc42.ca.